Madden. Oh, Mr. Bond. Oh, nice to see you again, miss. My, you haven't changed a bit. At my age, old fossils don't change, miss. <laughs> but you, you're real grown up now. How long is it? Three years? No, four. I graduated from the University of California this year. Well, well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank Excuse you. Excuse me. Jack, taxi. Take Miss Haddon's bag. bags. Pleasure, miss. Hello, How Jack. I'm sorry it's sadness you've come home to, miss. Everybody in the village will miss your father. Everybody. I'll sit in front with you, Jack. Right, miss. Thank you, Mr. Bond. Goodbye, Miss Haddon. village hasn't changed much, has it? No, not much. You must have packed up and left America very sudden-like. Yes, the day I got the news. Ah, shocking business. Why, I drove your dad in this very car only last Tuesday. Please, Jack. And coming after your poor mother's death only last year, well, really. Jack, if you don't mind, I... Oh, uh, oh sorry, miss. This is Hatton. Your stepmother, she's taking it very brave, as you'd expect. Real wonderful she is. I've never met her. Oh, that's right. I'd forgotten how long you'd been away. But you like Mrs. Haddon, I'm sure. Everybody likes Mrs. Haddon. There's St. Mary's. And there's your house. Well, here you are, miss. Back home again. Here you are, Jack. Thanks very much. Want some help? No, thank you, miss. I can manage. Don't you worry. Jack, over here. April, my dear, I've wanted so long to meet you. How do you do? I got your cable the day before yesterday, and I came as quickly as I could. Yes, of course. You must be exhausted. Yes, I am. The place looks wonderful. Good day, Mrs. Adam. Thank you, Jack. It hasn't changed a bit. I'm so happy to have you home, my dear. Yes, it's all rather different, isn't it? Yes, it certainly is. I had the whole house done over last year. Come and sit down, my dear, and I'll get you a nice cup of tea. Elsie! Don't you think it's much brighter? It was so gloomy before. But I loved it before. It was so warm and inviting. That old furniture. Dust collectors, my dear. Thank you. Oh, Elsie, this is Miss April. Pleased to meet you, miss. Hello, Elsie. You're new here. Where are Mr. and Mrs. Perdue? Oh, they left a long time ago. Thank you. As a matter of fact, we've closed up part of the house. Don't you think this modern is so much cleaner and healthier? Sugar, my dear? Oh. Didn't my father say anything? He was so surprised. What did you do with all the old dust collectors? I gave most of them away to people who needed them. Oh, I see. You see, April, I wanted to make an absolutely new home after I married. You don't blame me, do you? It isn't so hard to understand, is it? No, I suppose not. Just the you're like a complete stranger in my own house. Oh, no, April. Oh, my dear, don't. We've got to be brave, both of us. I'm sorry. Don't cry. I'm not crying. Please, I I'd like to go up to my room.
Hello, Cuddles. my dear. Would you like to have a warm bath and change before dinner? No, thank you. I think I'll stay and unpack some things. Please, don't worry about me. I quite understand how you feel about these little toys. But they're dust collectors, my dear. <laughs> Mother and Daddy always promised me that my room would be left as it was. For me to come home to. Yes, of course. But it's not wise to live in the past, April. And I am your mother now. My stepmother, you mean. Very cruel, April. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I guess I'm a little tired. Please, April, I'd rather you didn't smoke, if you don't mind. Why? I don't like it, my dear. But I enjoy smoking. Well, what harm is there in it? No harm, April. It's just that the smell of tobacco smoke makes me feel ill. Your dear father stopped smoking to please me. I can't imagine Daddy without his pipe. Well, he loved it so. He gave it up to please me. I bet he did. I didn't even have to ask him. He was so much better without it, and without liquor, too. What? Daddy without his wine cellar and, and Napoleon brandy? We won't discuss it anymore. But I must tell you, I don't permit strong drink in my house. Yes. It is your house, isn't it? And it's all so different. April, I loved your father very much. I've been so alone these last few days. Ever since the awful shock of his death. Let's have dinner, shall we? Then we can talk and get to know each other. Very quiet this evening, my dear. I was thinking about my father. I'd like to know exactly what happened to him. A little later, dear. How is the coffee? Not like American, I know. I'll get used to it again, I guess. I don't think Elsie approves of me. Well, she's a very simple girl, you know. I think she rather expected you to wear more suitable clothes for the occasion. I had no time to buy any new clothes. Yes, dear, I understand. You said that after dinner, you'd tell me about my father and the accident. Very well. There isn't much to tell, really. He went out fishing in the bay on Monday evening, in a rowing boat. And another boat, a larger one, I suppose, ran him down. His boat was cut in half. And they found the body next day. Poor father. And the boat that ran him down? They haven't found it yet. They... Why haven't they found this murderer? It could have been an accident, April. But why hasn't someone come forward? The other boat must have been damaged. The police have searched every harbor for miles around. Yes, you may well say that. You know he was very unhappy about you, April, all this last year. You never wrote. I didn't write. He never wrote to me. He didn't tell me of my mother's illness. He, he didn't tell me when she was dying. He didn't tell me anything. April, how can you say that? He did not. He didn't write. I wrote to him, to my mother. I even wrote to the servants and no one answered. Until after my mother died. I got a letter from him then and... Months later, I got another letter telling me he'd married again. 
Well, if you knew the truth about those terrible months and about your mother, if you didn't hear from him, April, it was to spare you from knowing. Knowing what? That your mother had become... Oh, my dear, I'm sorry. That your mother had become a, a drunkard, a dipsomaniac. That's what caused her death. Are you crazy? How dare you say such a thing about my mother? April, I was her nurse. I'm only telling you what we tried to spare you I don't knowing. care who you were. I don't believe it. April, Take please listen to me. off of me. We tried to prevent anyone from knowing. No, you're lying. It's not true. April, you're not being fair. I'm telling you the truth. I nursed your mother with all the strength and skill that I had. I don't believe you. Breakfast is at 8 o'clock on account of the funeral is at 10. Thank you, Elsie. Shall I hang up your clothes for you, miss? No, thank you. I'll do it myself. Oh, well, missus told me just to see that no, you were that's all right. I'd like another cup of coffee, please, Elsie. Very good, miss. Yes, ma'am. Very well, I'll take it. I tried to help her unpack, ma'am, but she wouldn't let me. Never mind. And I know why she wouldn't. She's got strong liquor in that suitcase of hers. What? A whole bottle. I saw it. Are you sure? I'm certain of it, ma'am. Not surprising either after what you told me about her mother. Elsie, I think it would be kinder if we didn't mention this to anyone. Very well, ma'am. I won't tell anyone if you don't want me to. Thank you, Elsie. I wanted to make sure you were all right. It's very nice of you, thank you. Good night. We don't want our first evening to end on an unfriendly note, do we? I had hoped when you came home that we would be friends. Your dear father hoped so too. You said some pretty horrible things tonight. Yes, the truth can be brutal. As a nurse, I should have known how to soften it for you. I blame myself. I'd rather not talk about it. Very well. Have your coffee before it gets cold. Good night. Good night. Pleasant dreams. of all things, at her own father's funeral. And if you ask me, that's why she didn't come. It's her mother all over again. What a pity. How terrible for poor Mrs. Haddon. Well, what do you expect? The apple never falls far from the tree. Why, only last night, Elsie, I... have you forgotten your promise? I think you'd better go home now. Yes, Mum. What a pity you had to come here by yourself, Mrs. Haddon. Miss April should be ashamed. Poor child, I don't blame her. She's had a long and tiring journey, and this has been a great emotional shock for her. But today, of all days... Please, try and think well of April. 
Only for her father's sake. Elsie, I want a straight answer. Who tried to awaken me this morning? The missus herself. And she's very upset, too. Well, don't you think I am? My own father's funeral. Yes, miss. That's exactly what everybody was talking about. Why, when I was there, I heard them say... Elsie, that's quite enough. Is the vicar or anyone coming to lunch, Mrs. Adden? No, only Mr. Driscoll, the lawyer. I cancelled everyone else. I thought Miss April would prefer it. It was a beautiful service, my dear. I'm sorry you couldn't be there. How could you let me oversleep like that this morning? Please. Don't you remember me trying to waken you? No, I don't. That's hardly surprising. What do you mean? Stop pretending, April. I told you last night I didn't approve of drinking in this house. Drinking? I took an empty brandy bottle from your bedside table this morning. Well, I, well, I, I just got that for the plane because I was sick. I only had a little bit. Are you crazy? You seem to think I am. I tell you... April, how could you do this? You're making something out of nothing. The whole thing's ridiculous. All I know is I couldn't waken you. When I saw that bottle by your bedside, I knew why you slept so soundly. Will you stop that? I did not drink that brandy. I'm sure I didn't drink it. Would it would be easy to lie to me, April. I'm not lying to you. I want to believe you. But I went through a lot with your mother, and I don't want to go through it again. Look, stop talking about my mother. Then don't remind me. I don't want to quarrel with you like this. If I've misjudged you, I'm sorry. Don't resent me. Don't hate me, my darling. Someone we both love has just died. And we must stand together, not apart. I can't believe it. I've never overslept like that before. What did people say? What did you tell them? That you were tired and grief-stricken. And that they understood, because they were all grief-stricken. Just as I am, and always will be. I'm sorry. The balance of my entire estate is to be held in trust for my daughter, April, until she shall reach the age of 21 years, provided that if I die before she reaches said age of 21 years, she shall return to England immediately, and reside with my wife until she attains her majority. But, Mr. Driscoll, surely this isn't my husband's last will. When did he make it? At the time of your marriage. But he made another a few months ago. As I prepared it, but he kept wanting so many changes, and he never signed it. I see. Now, April, is there anything you don't understand? I'm not quite sure what it all means. Well, it means that Florence gets this house, its contents, and a thousand pounds a year. You get all the rest, uh, but Florence has control of it until your 21st birthday. That's very soon, isn't it? Yes, in about three weeks. Until then, you are the ward of your stepmother. You must remain under her roof and in her care. And if I don't wish to remain here? April. But Florence is your legal guardian. You must stay with her. If you don't live with her until you're 21, you lose your share of the estate. Mr. Driscoll. What if something should happen to me in the next three weeks, before I'm 21? <laughs> My dear child, I've never seen anyone look healthier. But if I should die? Then the entire state would go to Mrs. Hatton. Dear, for goodness sake. Mr. Driscoll, is there anything else? No, that's all. Excuse me. It's been a tragic year for you, Florence. Well, it's better for everyone that's April's back. I'm sure you're right. And how's she taking it? Oh, not too badly. It's a little difficult for her. She's a... Uh... Nervous, not too strong, a little like her mother. Like her mother? In more ways than one. It's just that she's unbalanced. Perhaps now she's home, she'll settle down and get over it. I admit I did hear some gossip about her not being at the funeral. They said that I she never listened to gossip. No, no, neither do I. <laughs> Good day, Mrs. Haddon. Mr. Driscoll? Yes, my dear? Were you at the inquest? Yes, of course. Did anyone question the fact that my father was out fishing in the bay that night? Why should they? Well, I've never known my father to fish from a rowboat before. But his habits may have changed. Remember, you've been away for four years. What was the evidence at the inquest? Purely circumstantial, of course. The remains of the wrecked boat and your father's fishing tackle. April, 
try to forget Mr. Driscoll, exactly. did you ever see my mother when she was ill? It wasn't possible to see her. She was confined to her room. I believe she was a little difficult. You mean Florence told you that my mother was an alcoholic? I'm afraid that's the case. But who else said so? Well, your father knew, of course. My father's dead. There were the servants here. The servants have all been sent away. April, you must get a grip on yourself. You obviously need a rest. Florence is the very person to look after you. Is there anybody else who can tell me what happened? There's old Dr. Elder, of course. He had charge of the case. Why don't you drop in and see him? Dr. Elder? Yes, I think I will. Please, Miss Heaven. I'm sorry, Doctor, but she broke right in. Oh, it's all right, Mary. Oh, what can I do for you, young lady? I want to see Dr. Elder. I am Dr. Elder. That's not possible. Michael! Oh, I can't believe it! It's so good to see you. Oh, it's been a long time, April. You're a real doctor. Mm-hmm. And I've got a diploma to prove it. Oh, I'm proud of you. Here, come and sit over here. Oh, would you like a cigarette? No, Florence doesn't. Yes, I think I will. Thank you. Uh, tell me what you've been doing with yourself all these years. Michael, I'd love to sit and talk to you, but I really came to see your uncle. Well, my uncle's retired, and I've taken over his practice. Can't I help him? No, I don't think so. Oh, please. You see, your uncle knew my parents, and I want to talk to him about something very important. Now, what is all this about? Well, there are quite a few things I don't understand about my mother's illness or her death. And I have only Florence's word about these things, and frankly, I think she's lying. Now, you're letting this whole thing upset you far too much. And I think as an old friend, you're talking a lot of nonsense. Florence is a very fine person. You think so, huh? Yes, I what do. What are you doing? Taking your pulse. Well, I don't. I think she's a cunning, conniving fraud. Oh, now relax. You're working yourself up over nothing. She told me my mother was a drunkard. Oh, so that's what's upset you. Well, do you believe it? There's nothing else to believe. Oh. Has my stepmother changed everybody's thinking in this town, even you? No, it's not a case of that. It's... She even intimated that I was too drunk to go to my father's funeral. No, you're mistaken there, because I happen to know Florence stopped people discussing. I don't believe... Oh, you've got her all mm. wrong. Oh, Florence is a very wonderful person, and everyone Look. in this town thinks exactly the same way as I do. Michael, will you listen? You should have seen the look on my stepmother's face when she found out that my father hadn't signed a new will. As it now stands, the bulk of the estate goes to me, providing I live with her until I'm 21. Do you know what you're implying? Yes, I do. That Florence is going to try and kill me before my birthday, so that she can inherit the entire estate. So I haven't got very much time. Now this listen to me, young lady. Never let anyone in this district hear you talk like that about Florence Hatton. Understand? Oh, my God. When I saw you, I thought maybe I'd found somebody that might be willing to help me. No, April, please. My father was murdered! It was an accident. Here, it's in the paper. I don't care what's in the paper. Go on, read it. Can I help you, miss? Yes, I'm looking for a power launch with a damaged bow. <laughs> the police sergeant was looking for the same thing. Oh, thank you.
Michael, what are you doing? Oh, just proving a diagnosis of mine. Oh. Uh, look at yourself, you're a bundle of nerves. Oh, you don't have to scare your patient half to death to prove your point. You didn't scream like that when I held you in the oh. old days. Oh, well, that was a long time ago. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm going out to the lighthouse. I've got a patient of mine out there. I'm waiting for the boat to pick me up. Yeah, what's this? Memories, eh? Mm. Yeah, they were happy days. Yes. Sorry I was a bit rough with you yesterday. Oh, that's all right. I guess I deserved it. Maybe you think it was feminine intuition on my part, but I know Florence... You're developing a complex. All right. All right, I won't say another word about it to you until I can prove something. Oh, no. Believe me, is. Well, we've got to go. So soon? I'd much rather stay. Dr. Elder! Here, Jack. Ready, Doc? Yeah, I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, by the way, if you ever feel like uh, taking the old happy days out to sea, don't forget to sign me on, huh? Seaman, navigator, cook, <laughs> or if you're lonesome, companion. Thanks, Mike. Hey, now hold that. Hold what? No, no, the smile, silly. Oh. <laughs> now, you keep it right there, huh? It suits you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. The meal's getting spoilt, ma'am. No idea where Miss April can be. Well, you're surely not going to wait any longer. Very well, Elsie, perhaps you had better serve it. Quite right, ma'am. No reason why yours should be spoiled. Up tomorrow night. I'll be ready, Jake. Uh, it's still here. Uh, right after you left today, I found something that proves I was right. Oh, April, not again. Let me show you. The boat that ran my father down would carry the mark of the crash on its bow, wouldn't it? Of course. The speed it must have been traveling. Well. There. Look at the dent in the bow and those paint scrapings. Now, don't try and tell me I'm uh, crazy. Don't get so excited. Why, well, that dent could have been caused by anything. But, Michael, it's new. Look at those paint scrapings. They've just happened recently. Mm, now, you take it easy. This boat hasn't been off our moorings for ages. Oh, Michael. I tell you, this is the boat that ran my father down and killed him. And that stupid sergeant hasn't even checked it yet. Michael, it all fits. Florence did it. I, I, I know she did it. Oh, I... Now, stop it, April. Florence adored your father, understand that. Besides, she never goes near a boat. Why, she couldn't take out a launch like this and bring it back single-handed, don't you understand? I think that... Michael, please don't say anything. April, my 
my dear. I've been waiting for you. I was beginning to worry. Is anything wrong? No, nothing. Oh, yes, I'd forgotten. You two are friends. Yes, we're very old friends. April, you haven't had any lunch. I wasn't hungry. Well, Elsie has kept a hot meal waiting for you. Run up to the house and have it. We don't want anything to happen to you. I think you should do as Florence says, April. Poor child. She's been through rather a lot lately. I hope there's nothing seriously wrong with her, Doctor. No, I don't think it's anything serious. I've done all I can to help her, but she makes things rather difficult for me. She's full of all sorts of complexes, but you've probably found that out for yourself. Yes, she does seem to be imagining things. Well, goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, Mrs. Haddon. been away from me all day. And you acted so strangely tonight. Don't be like this, April. I'm so alone now. Can't you trust me? Try and be a little friendly. What were you doing out there, my dear? Nothing. Just looking at the boat. Remembering all the fun we used to have. Yes, your father used to love it, too. It was one thing I could never share with him. Why? I've always been afraid of boats. I suppose it's because I'm a bad sailor. Try and get some rest, my dear. Good night. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Henry Collins, miss. Hello. Oh, you'll be Miss Adden. I That's heard right. you was back. What are you doing here? What I'm told, giving the old boat a spit and polish. Regular once a month job. When was the last time you worked on the boat? Mm, seven or eight days ago. And why are you working on it now? Mrs. Adden told me to give it a special cleanup. Oh, Mrs. Haddon. Maybe she thought you might like to use it. Tell me something. Has anybody taken this boat out since you last worked on it? No, no, couldn't have done. Wasn't no one to take it out. Even your father didn't use it for months. Do you always check it very carefully? Eh? I said, do you always check it? Examine the boat very carefully. Of course I do. I checks it from stem to stern. Then will you come with me, please? Perhaps you can tell me something about this. What about that? Well, blimey. Was that dent there the last time you checked this boat? It certainly was not. Would you swear to it? I always do my job properly. Ah, that'll need straightening out in a spot of paint. Would you swear that that dent was new and couldn't have been made while this boat was tied up here? Of course it's new. If it had been there when I was here before, I'd have seen it. Now look, don't tell anybody about this until you hear from me. Don't you worry, Miss And I'll... you'll swear that that was made in the last few days. I'll make it worth your while. Eh? Hey? Never mind. Will you swear to it? I always tell the truth, I do. And I do my job. Good. That's all I wanted to know. So it was my stepmother that told you the happy days hadn't been out in weeks. That's right. Mrs. Haddon herself. Sergeant, I think if you come with me, I can prove she's been lying. Oh, now, look, Miss April, we're checking on an accident in a routine... It was not an accident, Sergeant. It was murder. Murder? What do you say? I found the boat to kill my father. And I'm sure it was my stepmother that ran him down. If you're insinuating that Mrs. Haddon could possibly... Who else could benefit from my father's death but my stepmother? But I... And I've got all the evidence you need to prove it. Now, look here, Miss April. I've known you since you were a little girl. I don't think you know what you're talking about. Sergeant Wicks, haven't you been looking for a boat with a newly made dent in its bow? Well? Well, the Happy Days happens to have one. So I suggest you go and look at it. All right. I'll do just that. And you're coming along with me. Dad. 
there. There's your evidence. I don't see anything. Oh, no. Henry, why did you repair this? Why? Ain't I done a good job on it? Well, I... Has my stepmother been down here? No. Then why did you do this? I'm paid to keep this boat ship shape, and that's what I done. Ask him about the dent in the bow. Well, go on and ask him. Well, Henry, all right then, well, there was a bit of a dent. There, you see? But that could have been done any time, with a boat rubbing up against the landing stage. With these bumpers in place, that's impossible. Well, you said before that dent was new and, and couldn't have been done with this boat tied up here. That right? Eh? Is that right what Miss Adams said? Look here, nobody's going to get me into no trouble. You said you'd swear that was done in the last few... Remember it, miss? You said you'd pay me money if I'd swear to it. Did you try to bribe this man? No, I did not try to bribe this man. I... Well, well he's, he's twisted everything that I've said. I'm paid to do my job. Do you realize how serious this is? Yes, I do realize how serious this is. And I also realize that my stepmother has made complete fools out of all of you. Poor Mrs. Adam. She's going to have a lot of trouble with that young woman. Drinks like a fish, they tell me. Just like her mother. Can I see you a moment, please, Mrs. Hatton? Why, Sergeant Wicks, how is your wife? Oh, much better. We're extremely grateful. You, uh, you don't mind if I go on with this, do you? It's the first aid equipment that I promised the children's playground. Oh, that's very kind of you. Yes? Well, it's about Miss April, Mrs. Hatton. Go on. She came in to see me yesterday, all excited, and she made some slanderous... Well, she made some very unpleasant insinuations. She said that the boat we were looking for was the Happy Days. Oh, poor child is full of wild fancies. You see, Sergeant, if a person has been used to intoxicants and is then deprived of them, well, medically... Well, you understand. Yes, but... She mustn't go around talking like this. You'll have to take her in hand, Mrs. Hatton, and control her. I'm trying to, but with love and care. But... Please, Sergeant, could I ask you for her sake not to mention this to anyone? Very well, madam. But you're being more generous than wise. Kindness is the best teacher. Is it, Mrs. Hatton? I warn you, Miss April, I've known your family for a long time. But any more talk like yesterday, and you'll be in serious trouble. Good day, Mrs. Adam. Good day, Sergeant. Don't you think you owe me an apology? I can forgive you for what you've done, because I know the strain you're under. I'm sorry, Florence. Very sorry that I told him what I did. I promise you, it, it won't happen again. That makes me very happy. Now, I've said I would help decorate the church hall. I shall need a mass of flowers. Would you like to come and help me cut them? I'd love to. Come along, then. They're lovely at this time of the year. The colors are so beautiful. What about you, Florence? You're always doing such nice things for other people. I'm glad to be able to. Is that one of the reasons why you became a nurse? Perhaps it was. Did you like it? Sometimes. Sometimes I hated it. It was very hard work for very little compensation, you know. How long did you take care of my mother? Three months, night and day. Didn't Mrs. Perdue help you? She was very fond of my mother. My dear, she was worse than useless. Besides, they were dishonest. They had to be dismissed. Oh, I can't believe that. What happened to the Perdues? Oh, uh, oh, Elsie. Yes, Mum. Have you forgotten what day it is? Why, well, it's Wednesday, Mum. And your mother's birthday. So it is. I promised you the day off, remember? Oh, thank you very much, Mrs. Adam. That's very kind of you. Well, stay overnight. I know she loves to have you. Sure you can manage without me? Oh, yes, we can manage by ourselves. It's only for one night. Well, run along, Elsie, or you'll miss your bus. Bless you, Mum. Florence, you were going to tell me. What did happen to the Perdues? Oh, uh, I believe they went to Mrs. Harrison. The Harrisons? Oh, yes, they were very good friends of ours. 
They didn't stay there long. She had trouble with them, too. Excuse me. Aren't you going to stay and help me finish the flowers? No, I've got some other things that I really should do. Oh, April, if you're thinking of visiting the Harrisons, I shouldn't bother. They've not been very friendly. Thank you, Florence. Madam, Miss April Haddon. April! Darling child, oh, how lovely. Hello, Mrs. Harrison. Let me look at you. How you've changed. But come and sit down and tell me all about yourself. Well, I, I really came to get some information. I thought maybe you could help me. But of course, darling. Penny, for your thoughts, Florence. I was thinking about April. Oh, poor child, she has had a bad time. But it's her birthday in a few days. I was wondering if I couldn't get a few of her old friends. Let's make it a party. Oh, that would cheer her up, wouldn't That's it? That's what I wanted to oh, do. Yes. yes, all her old friends now. There's Pam and John. And you mean the Oh, it was an awful thing to come home to. I, I wish I'd never gone away. My dear, even if you've been home, I doubt you could have done anything. Florence had complete control. My father, didn't he have anything to say? He was always so frightened and helpless about illness. And Florence had the doctor under her thumb. Poor Dr. Elder, he's so old and vague. Couldn't you do anything? You were my mother's best friend. I wasn't allowed to see her. No one was. She was virtually a prisoner. Even your father was only allowed in at certain times. And then Florence was always there. What about the servants, Mr. and Mrs. Perdue? Didn't they fight her? They adored my mother. They implored your father to get in another doctor and a different nurse, but he wouldn't listen. Florence said the Perdues were dishonest. Oh, I couldn't believe that. I had them here for a while, but with all this gossip going on about them, they wouldn't stay. Oh, she'd see to that. Mm. I guess they knew too much. They said some very unpleasant things about her. Really? What did they say? I remember them saying that they had seen something in her death. There was something very strange going on. Yes. Well, there was. Florence didn't nurse my mother. She killed her. Oh, my dear. I, I don't like Florence any more than you do, but I couldn't believe she deliberately caused your mother's death. Oh, my dear, no, that would be too awful to think about. Nothing's too awful for that woman. Oh, darling, I'm sure you're wrong. You must No, be. I'm not. I'm not. And I'm going to prove it. I hope you found something interesting among my things. Give me those pictures. 
And you don't know anything about boats. You get seasick at the very sight of them. Give me those pictures, April. No, I won't. I need these pictures to prove you've been lying. What do they prove? That I once posed for some snap trots on a boat. I hated the sea then and I hate it now. Do you want to make a fool of yourself again? If the police had seen these and the debt in the boat that you had Henry Collins hammer up. Oh, no, I won't. Oh. I hope they hang you. Do you hate me so much that you'd come here like a thief and pry into my things? And then try and justify your action by accusing me of something so horrible, I... You can't even say it, can you, Florence? It was murder. Get out of here, you little thief! Did you take anything else from my room? No. Things aren't always what they seem, April. If you'd only ask me instead of spying on me, you might save yourself from your own hysterical imagination and learn the truth. No. What did you take from my room? It certainly seems strange that these letters were never posted. Yes. And why weren't they mailed? I don't know. It doesn't prove anything, does it? Well, what about the photographs I found? Well, that's just her word against yours. You say you saw them, she could say they never existed. But I know they did exist. Which proves that story about Florence being afraid of the sea is a pack of lies. Now we know she can handle a boat like the Happy Days. Well, if I was a lawyer instead of a doctor, I'd say that none of this evidence is admissible. There's no proof of anything, is there? Mm, I guess not. That's why I want to go and see your uncle. He was the only person besides Florence that was allowed into my mother's sick room and knew what went on. Well, in that case, let's go and see him. Eh? Maybe it'll put your mind at ease. Your mother didn't respond to treatment at all. That was because... Now, go on, tell her the truth. She was an alcoholic. I can't believe it, Dr. Elder. I just can't believe it. I know it. just how you feel, my child. It was a great shock to all of us. But no matter how we watched her, she always got hold of the liquor somehow. We took it away, and next day there'd be more there. And she'd be half stupefied. Uh, it was the servants, of course. Your father had to dismiss them. When you saw my mother? Uh, it, it wasn't pleasant, April. She was almost out of her mind. We had to keep her quiet by sedatives. Administered by Florence, of course. Naturally. And the fits of hysteria got worse. The supply of alcohol had ceased, you see. That proves the Purdue's were guilty, I suppose. Dr. Elder, why did my mother drink? Who knows? And later, she began to have delusions of persecution. Fighting to get out of the room. Even in her weak state. Then 
Florence found her on the floor, unconscious, by the open window. Pneumonia had set in, and she died without regaining consciousness. I, I'd rather have kept it from your child, but well, you wanted the truth. I'll see you out. No, you stay there and take it easy. You know, this boat is the only place I really feel at home in these days. Yes, I've noticed that. Michael, did you ever really wonder if Florence's story was the whole truth? Well, yeah, what my uncle said. Yes, I know. But no one was allowed in the room. The only facts have come from Florence. What if she wanted my mother to die? Well, why should she? Well, she married my father, didn't she? You know, if you want to prove something, you can often make the facts fit the case. Now she knows that I'm on to her, she's got to get rid of me. If I die, she's not only safe, but rich. Now, you listen to me. Stop the stupid stepmother complex. Now, why don't you, uh, why don't you try and go away somewhere for a while, huh? No, I'm staying right here. Florence is sending some kind of a trap for me, and I'm going to be waiting for well, it. You've got to think of something else. How can I think of other things when my father... What are you thinking about? Michael, I won't make stop. Mm. I know. You should be asleep. You'll strain your eyes, typing in this light. We can't go on like this, you know, in this state of armed neutrality. I've done everything I can to bring you closer to me. I've even planned a little something for your birthday. Very well, if you don't wish to talk to me. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Florence, I've been thinking it over, and I'm sorry about the other night, prying into your desk. I'm very glad to hear you say so. Now, let's forget it ever happened, shall we? That's very nice of you. Thank you, Florence. What did you do with yourself all day yesterday? Well, I went for a drive with Michael Elder. I used to work with his uncle, you know. Really? He was in charge of your mother's case. Why don't you go and talk to him? Yes, I, I, I might do that one day. I have to drive to the other side of the bay this morning. I'm taking that first aid box to the children's playground. I'd like you to come with me. Well, I... We have so much to talk about. Perhaps I can explain everything you want to know. I think you'll find, my dear, you've been misjudging me. All right. I'll get ready. It was very foolish of you to bother old Dr. Elder yesterday, April. He told you? He wrote to me. He told me everything you said. And you lied to me. He thinks you're mentally unbalanced, and I'm beginning to think so, too. 
Is that going to be your defense, Florence? That I'm crazy? Then you'd come to me and ask questions instead of going to other people. All right. Tell me why you had those letters hidden in your desk. When your letters arrived, your mother was too sick. She couldn't read them. And your father wouldn't send her letters to you because, as I told you, he didn't want you to know anything about her illness. Your answers are almost believable, Florence. You just don't want to believe me. Very well, then don't. I don't care anymore. Why are you turning off here? It's being the cliff road. But why? It's a shortcut. It saves time. What are you doing? Locking the door in case it flies open. You don't lean against it. Florence! Florence, look out! The brakes! The brakes! They won't work! Jump, people! Jump! Florence. Thank heaven you, you managed. Oh, get in. I'll drive from here. Now, look, don't you understand, darling? When you're in this state of mind, everything that happens is a threat. Every word, every look has a hidden meaning. You don't believe anything I've told you, do you? I want you to believe in me, darling. And as a doctor, I know... And I know she tried to kill me this afternoon. And she's going to try it again. If you go on like this, you're going to have a nervous breakdown. Oh, that's ridiculous. I'm just plain scared. And I need help, Michael. I need help badly. And I want to help you, darling. You know that, don't you? Don't leave me, Michael. Oh, I'm so frightened. Doctor! Where are you? Doc, where are you? Ah, there you are, Doctor. You're ahead of time, aren't you? I know, but Arthur's very sick. We'd better shove off now. Go on. Well, I hate leaving you like this time. Bye, Michael. We'll see you bright and early in the morning, eh? I heard you come in, so I brought you something. I'm not hungry. I waited a long time for dinner for you. Of course, I can't compel you to dine with me, or even sit with me if you don't want to. Let's drink our milk while it's warm, shall we? All right. Where have you been all day? Walking. By yourself? Yes, by myself. It's not good to be alone, April. It gives you too much time to think. You're very clever, Florence. 
You've convinced everybody in this town you're an angel of mercy. Everybody but... But me. You killed my father. And I know how you did it. And now you're trying to kill me. You feel all right, April? What kind of a woman you are. But you're just not that fun. to trouble you. It's poor April. Could you possibly come at once? Thank you. This way, doctor. Please hurry. Good heavens. Oh, what a shocking thing. I sent for you, doctor, because you knew all about her mother's case. Yes, yes, of course. Can you help her? Here, take this. Open the window, will you? Let's have some fresh air in here. Try to cope with this violence, these drunken fits of temper before. Uh, oh, Florence, help me here, look. Oh, child, she's a victim of her own hysterical oh. imagination. Yes, I know, I know. Oh. And I never realized she was so ill. Mm. April. Mm. April. Mm. Ah. to help me. Please help me. Yes, yes, child. That's why I'm here. Oh, what's happening? What do I smell? Brandy. Yes, I know, I know. Florence did it. She put it there. I didn't... You. You did this. Like you did to my mother. And I can prove it. There's no brandy there, April. My letters? Where are my letters? Where? She had... She's getting violent again, you. Doctor. No. If any leads to hysteria, I warn you. Better do something quickly. Never Please. mind, never mind. Oh, she's trying to... She's a murderer. Uh, yes. She... Oh. Uh -huh. What are you doing? What's she gonna do? No, no, no. She's trying to kill me. No, no. Like she killed my mother. Please, don't let her get near me with that. No, no, don't let her touch me. No, no she's no. going to kill me. No, she killed my mother. She's going to kill me. Well, no, tell her to go away. I'll hold her. No, no, don't touch me. Please get her out of here. Oh, no, please. Oh, oh. Oh, poor child, perhaps you'll sleep now. I was up with her all last night. So she won't stir after what I've given her. And you can get your rest tonight. I'll look around in the morning. Thank you, Doctor, for helping me. If I should die... I'll find my own way out. Before I wait.
can't believe it. She wasn't in her bedroom. I searched the garden, and I found the boat was missing. There is some hope, isn't there? We found the boat on the rock reef, what was left of it. And April? They're still searching. If only I sat up with her all night again, but I couldn't. Now, 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 nobody blames you, Florence. I should have given her a much stronger sedative. I tried so hard to help her. Inspector, I'm afraid I shall have to ask you to make a statement, ma'am. Yes, yes, of course. Hello, Mr. Driscoll. Inspector, as this letter concerns Mrs. Haddon, I prefer to hand it to you in her presence. To be handed to April Haddon after her 21st birthday, or to be handed to the police in the event of her death before that day. Child, she was always so sure that something would happen to her, some accident or something. She was almost hysterical about it. That doesn't read like a hysterical letter, Mrs. Haddon. The girl's mind was affected by the shock of her father's death. She'd been drinking and making wild accusations. I don't know what she's uh, written in this letter, but if it's about me, it's bound to be unpleasant. It'll be read at the inquest. Is that really necessary? I'm afraid so. Well, it won't do any good. I quite agree with Mrs. Haddon. And I don't. I'd like to make a statement, Inspector, about Miss April Hatton. Well, let's make this official. You'd better come down to the station. If you don't mind, I'd rather say what I have to say right here. Very well. Last night, I went out to see a patient of mine at the lighthouse. I left at 2 a.m. Jack Story was with me. Yes? As we approached the river, I saw the happy days moving quietly without lights. How'd you know it was the happy days? She was caught in the beam of the searchlight, and I saw who was at the wheel. April Hatton, I suppose? No. It was Mrs. Florence Hatton. I think you're mistaken, Doctor. I wasn't mistaken. A few minutes later, the launch goes past us out of control at full speed. April was propped up against the steering column, unconscious where Mrs. Haddon had left oh, This is ridiculous. He's lying. Story and I, we followed that launch and we saw it crash up on Rock Reef. You don't believe this, do you? He was in love with April. He has no evidence, no proof of any kind. We managed to save a little of that evidence, Inspector. You don't believe him. He's lying, I tell you. It didn't work, did it, Florence? You little... There he goes! There he goes! No. Normal? Normal. That's wonderful. Now you're going away for a good long rest with a good tall doctor. <laughs> Anyone I know? Well, there is a fellow I can recommend with the name of... Uh... I don't know what's saying, you're not coming through. He said, I love you. 